Pericardial diseases. The following diseases affect the pericardium of the heart. Pericarditis, pericardial effusion, pericardial tamponade, constrictive pericarditis. Pericarditis. This is an inflammation of the pericardium. It is usually secondary to other diseases or infections. Causes include infectious agents, immunologically mediated, neoplastic, and miscellaneous. Types are acute pericarditis and chronic pericarditis. Infectious agents include virus, tuberculosis, pyogenic bacteria, fungi, and parasites. Immunologically mediated diseases causing pericarditis include rheumatic fever, SLE, scleroderma, postcardiotomy, post-MI, and drug hypersensitivity reactions. Other causes resulting in pericardium inflammation include MI, uremia, cardiac surgery, tumors, radiation, or trauma. Acute pericarditis can either be serous pericarditis, it is characterized by the presence of the serous inflammatory exudates, fibrinous and serofibrinous pericarditis, both are composed of serous fluid which is mixed with fibrinous exudates, purulent or suppurative pericarditis, which denotes the seeding of the pericardium by the bacteria. Chronic pericarditis comes under adhesive mediastatinopericarditis. Here, fibrosis of the pericardium occurs following suppurative infection. The pericardial sac gets obliterated while parietal layer adherence results in a strain on cardiac functions. Constrictive pericarditis. Here, the heart gets encased by the presence of a fibrocalcific scar, which is dense. It limits diastolic expansion and restricts cardiac function. Symptoms are chest pain relieved while bending or sitting. Signs are on auscultation, a friction rub is heard. Investigations are the same as for other heart conditions. Treatment of pericarditis includes non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and steroids. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are found helpful here and include ibuprofen, 600 to 800 milligrams, three times a day, or colchicine, 0.5 milligrams, twice a day. Friction rub is an extra heart sound confirming the diagnosis of pericarditis. It has a to and fro-like characteristic. Pericardial effusion. Distension of the pericardium by abnormal fluid or pus is called pericardial effusion. It may lead to cardiac tamponade. Signs and symptoms. Compressive atelectasis, dullness over the chest area. Treatment, surgical drainage of the pericardium along with the administration of systemic antibiotics. Usually, the pericardial sac is filled with straw-colored fluid up to a level of 30 to 50 milliliters. Because of a number of reasons, the pericardium may get filled with abnormal blood and pus. A chest x-ray may show globular heart enlargement if there is less than 500 milliliters of fluid in the sac. Furthermore, if the fluid is above 200 to 300 milliliters, it may affect the heart, resulting in MI, infective endocarditis, and perforation. It may compress the atria as well as the vena cava or even the ventricles themselves, resulting in restriction of cardiac filling and the appearance of a potentially fatal cardiac tamponade. Pericardial tamponade. The pericardial effusion which compresses the heart resulting heart in heart surgery, failure 24 to 48 Positive. hours after it. Neoplasia, uremia, idiopathic. Clinical features include dyspnea, collapse, decreased BP, tachycardia, rapid JVP, pulsus paradoxus, and Kussmaul sign. Investigations include chest x-ray, ECG, and echo. Treatment includes percutaneous pericardiocentesis and surgical drainage. Myocardial rupture and aortic dissection are rather uncommon causes of this condition. It usually occurs after MI. Pathophysiology of cardiac tamponade. Tamponade occurs from an increase in intrapericardial pressure due to the presence of abnormal fluid leading to heart chamber compression. This affects venous return, which decreases, while CO levels also decrease. Furthermore, 
diastolic pressure increases in all heart chambers, altering the blood flow. Percutaneous pericardiocentesis involves aspiration of fluid with the help of a needle inserted into the cardiac apex under echo. This also has diagnostic importance. Constrictive pericarditis results in heart failure. Causes are the same as for pericarditis. Signs and symptoms include ascites, increased liver size, peripheral edema, raised JVP, Kussmaul sign. Investigations include ECG, chest x-ray, and echo. Treatment includes diuresis and surgical pericardiectomy. In this condition, inflammation of the pericardium with scarring as well as thickening occurs and the cardiac muscles become tightened, which affect contraction. The heart becomes unable to expand because it is filled by blood. Kussmaul sign is a sign which shows raised jugular venous pressure on inspiration. Surgical pericardiectomy or pericardial stripping involves removing the whole pericardium from the heart. Hypertension, a condition in which arterial blood pressure is chronically raised above the normal range. Causes, 95% of hypertension has no specific underlying cause, so it is called essential. Secondary causes include alcohol, obesity, pregnancy, renal diseases, endocrine disorders, certain drugs, and heart conditions. 5% of patients have hypertension associated with diseases resulting in sodium retention and peripheral vasoconstriction. Normal BP is less than 130 systolic, while diastolic is 85 millimeters of mercury. Hypertension arises when blood pressure is 140 to 159 systolic, while diastolic is 90 to 99. Hypertension is divided into mild, moderate, or severe. Severe BP is above 180 to 110 millimeters of mercury. Target organ damage by hypertension. Hypertension largely affects the blood vessels producing structural changes in the vasculature. It affects the central nervous system, and stroke is a common problem here. It affects the eyes, especially the retina, and is also associated with central retinal thrombosis. High blood pressure places a high pressure load on the heart, resulting in hypertrophy and atrial fibrillation. Investigations. Urinalysis for blood, protein, and glucose, blood glucose, blood electrolytes, urea, and creatinine, serum total and HDL cholesterol, and 12-lead ECG. Control blood pressure. Management and treatment. Lifestyle modifications, such as an increase in physical activity, decreased intake of red meat, oily foods and fast foods, and weight loss. And antihypertensive drugs, such as thiazide and other diuretics, ACEIs, ARBs, CCBs, and beta blockers. The sole purpose of antihypertensive therapy is to reduce the incidence of adverse cardiovascular events, especially coronary artery pathologies, heart failure, or stroke. Non-drug therapy involves correction of obesity, decreasing alcohol use or intake and smoking, doing physical exercises regularly, increasing fruits in the diet, and adopting a diet which is balanced and low in saturated fats. Hypertensive crises. The severe increase in blood pressure, which may complicate hypertension, of any etiology affecting the organs and resulting in ischemia and damage. Vascular wall necrosis and ischemia occur. Drugs for hypertensive crises. The patient is usually given an IV for emergency management of hypertension. These include nitroprusside, nitroglycerin, nicardipine, hydrolyzine, labetalol, and phentolamine. Aortic aneurysms. Definition, the localized and abnormal dilatation of the aorta. Cause, atherosclerosis. Types, there are two types. Fusiform, involves circumferential aortic dilatation, and saccular, represents localized dilation of the aorta. Investigations include contrast CT, MRI, and abdominal ultrasounds. Treatment and management include lifestyle modification, BP control by beta blockers, surgery, 
endovascular aneurysm repair. Atherosclerosis results in arterial wall thinning via medial destruction secondary to plaque. The areas involved are root, arc, thoracic aorta, thoracoabdominal aorta, or the abdominal aorta. They are therefore named accordingly. Annuloaortic ectasia, thoracic aortic aneurysm or TAA, thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm, and abdominal aortic aneurysm, AAA. Aortic aneurysm can be true or false. The demarcation for true and false are, true aneurysm involves all three layers of the aorta, whereas false aneurysm involves a rupture within the adventitia. Treatment and surgery depend on the size of the aneurysm. Greater than 5.5 centimeters is considered for surgery. Endovascular aneurysm repair is used in those patients who cannot undergo surgery and reduces mortality. Acute aortic syndrome usually involves a rupture of the wall of the aorta with resultant hemorrhage, can result from increased blood pressure, any connective tissue disease, bicuspid aortic valve or coarctation of the aorta, any inflammatory diseases of the aorta, pregnancy classically in the third trimester, or trauma. Signs and symptoms, chest pain, faintness, decreased BP, shock and deficit pulse are characteristic features. Treatment is done with drugs or surgery. Diagnostic studies involve measuring blood pressure, noting pulses, chest x-ray, aortography, and CT scan. Medical treatment with drugs is through administering beta blockers intravenously. Important beta blockers in are IV vasodilators, such as nitroprusside, are used in cases of severe degrees of hypertension. Complications of acute aortic syndrome. These are the rupture of the aorta with resultant tamponade and obstruction of the artery, particularly its branch, with resultant myocardial infarction. Arrhythmias. With arrhythmias, the following problems are seen. Sinus bradycardia. Sinus rate is less than 60 per minute. Sinus arrhythmias, due to parasympathetic system activity. Sick sinus syndrome, due to fibrosis or degenerative changes of the SA node. Sinus tachycardia, sinus rate is greater than 100 per minute. Supraventricular tachycardia, due to narrow QRS complex, there is regular tachycardia. AV block, due to autonomic activity. Treatment is antiarrhythmic drugs. Arrhythmias are disturbances in the normal electrical conductance of the heart. These may be due either to heart structural abnormalities or to conduction problems of the heart. Sinus rhythm is the normal rhythm of the heart. Sick sinus syndrome is thought to occur at any age, but mostly affects older individuals. There are complaints of palpitations, syncope, and pain. There may be tachycardia, bradycardia, or pauses where the atria and ventricles do not show any activity. A permanent pacemaker is helpful. AV blocks are the result of autonomic activity with intermittent attacks. It is said that atrial tachyarrhythmias are often linked with AV block. AV blocks are divided into three degrees. First degree AV block, which is characterized by AV block with a prolonged PR interval. It is mostly symptomless. Second degree AV block. Here, there is dropped beats because of the failure of impulse conduction from the atria to the ventricles. Third degree AV block. Here, the atria and ventricles beat independently. Antiarrhythmic drugs. These are further divided into class 1, 2, 3, 4, and other. Atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is the most common sustainable heart arrhythmia. Epidemiology. 0.5% of people are affected. 8% of those are over age 70. Causes include CAD, valvular heart diseases, hypertension, hypothyroidism, alcohol, and pericardia diseases. Classifications are paroxysmal and persistent. Atrial fibrillation is a complex characterized by the presence of multiple interacting circuits around the atria, as well as abnormal automatic filling. There is re-entry of the circuits in the atria. 
the ventricles become activated irregularly. This leads to the appearance of an irregular pulse. Paroxysmal AF, intermittent and self-terminating attacks of AF. Persistent AF, here prolonged episodes occur that can be terminated by electrical or chemical cardioversion. Syncope, syncope is a sudden transient loss of consciousness. It may be due to total cerebral hypoperfusion. Causes include nerve problems involving the heart, positional hypotension, cardiovascular causes, neurological causes. Types are cardiac syncope, neurocardiogenic syncope, and seizures. Syncope or dizziness is usually common in old age. It affects an individual's ability to work or to drive. Cardiac syncope.